caffeine crosses the placenta and may impact a developing fetus during pregnancy. So what is the safe limit of daily caffeine intake if there is one? And what happens if you drink more than this amount? Here's the current recommendation for the amount of caffeine that can be consumed daily during pregnancy. Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Graham Dersna. So much of what we consume, such as food, alcohol, caffeine, and medication, have the potential to cross the placenta during pregnancy and affect the developing fetus. Because of this, studies are often conducted to determine if something has a safe amount that can be consumed or if it needs to be avoided completely. In this video, we'll learn about how caffeine might impact a fetus and if there is a safe amount in pregnancy. At the end, I'll show you a table of some common food and drinks and their associated caffeine content so you can make an informed decision about your caffeine intake. While you're watching, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. There are three main concerns regarding caffeine intake in pregnancy. The first is whether it can increase the risk of miscarriage. One study concluded that no amount of caffeine was associated with miscarriage, but a different study showed there was an increased risk with high amounts of caffeine. Both used the ranges of no caffeine per day, less than 200 mg per day, and more than 200 mg per day. Due to their conflicting results, it's not yet possible to say whether having more than 200 mg per day is safe or a risk for miscarriage, but both studies concluded that less than 200 mg is likely safe. As we learned in the Milestones of Pregnancy video, there are three trimesters to pregnancy, and within the second and third trimesters, there are several time points that tell us how developed a fetus is and the associated risks of delivery at that time. These points include preterm and late preterm, early, full, late, and postterm. Preterm delivery comes with several risks because the fetus is not fully developed and may not be ready to survive in the outside world. So studies have been conducted to determine if caffeine is a risk factor for causing preterm birth. Fortunately, each study agreed that there is no connection between less than 200 milligrams of caffeine intake per day and preterm birth. Intrauterine growth restriction, or IUGR, is the term used to identify a fetus that is not growing adequately. It means the fetus is in the bottom 10% of body weight compared to all fetuses at that point in time. Having a baby with IUGR can lead to several problems in the pregnancy and later in life once they're born. So it's important to determine the cause of IUGR, to closely monitor their growth throughout the pregnancy, and it might require early delivery. The results of one study of caffeine intake and IUGR were ambiguous at all amounts of consumption, whereas another study showed no connection at each amount. This is similar to the results of the miscarriage studies. So because of this, it's not possible to give clear recommendations on a safe amount of caffeine intake per day and the risk of IUGR. Based on these various studies, it's currently recommended that you consume less than 200 milligrams of caffeine per day during pregnancy. This is equal to about two cups of black coffee. If you don't currently consume caffeine, it's likely best not to begin during pregnancy. If you do consume caffeine and have more than 200 milligrams per day, try to lower the amount to less than 200 milligrams per day. But depending on how much you have per day, you may have to gradually decrease the amount because your body is likely used to it and an abrupt change may cause withdrawal symptoms including headache, fatigue, and irritability. To help you determine how much caffeine you're consuming, here is a table of common caffeine-containing items. Thanks for watching. Now hit that subscribe button and like the video. Then check out this other video to keep learning.